Hello all, very good morning. So in today's topic, we will discuss regarding the methods of data collection that is involving in the demography. So if you see, way back in 17th century, Mr. John Grant, so he is a London merchant. So he used the data from the London bills. So mainly of the mortality to devise an early life table. So if you see here, this work made him the father of modern demography. So for example, if you see in demography, see all the demographic analysis, it needs some data. So data is coming from the population in terms of stock, in terms of flows. So if you see the data, what is the data that is included in this demography means what is the number of births that are occurring, what is the number of deaths that are occurring and what is the migration rate so that we can, we can give the demographic data there. So here, if you see traditionally, the sources of this demography, mainly the, the sources of the information are mainly the census, population census and vital registration system. So vital registration systems, they include what is the death, what is the birth, what is the migration, what is the marital status and how many number of how many number of eligible, eligible couple are there for the pregnancy? So all these things were written in this vital registration system. So how many people got divorced? How many people got married? So all this data is helping us to form, is helping us to analysis the data in the demography. So if you see here, coming to the methods of data collection. So in this methods of data collection, we have primary data collection and we have secondary data collection. So if you see the primary data collection, so here data collection is done by the invigilator. So himself or herself mainly for a particular purpose. So in this primary collection, for mainly for a particular purpose, for a particular mode or for a particular intention, we are doing the data collection. For example, observation, interviews, questionnaires, diaries and critical incidents. So what is, whenever you are doing an observation, you observe a person for a particular purpose. So if you are collecting the data in primary source of collection here, it is mainly, it is mainly pertaining to the investigator. So for a specific focus, we are mainly focusing on a individual and we are collecting the data. So nextly, secondary data collection. So data collected by someone else for the same purpose. So we are taking the data which was already existing. So but being utilized by the investigator for another purpose. So if you see here, the data is collected for one purpose, so by someone. So you are taking the data in your study because it is relating to your study and you can use it. So that's what the secondary data collection. So mainly census national survey, registration of vital events, demographic studies and records and sampling methods. So if you see census, the census was mainly collected to count how many number of population are living. So for example, you want to implement some kind of a health program, you will take data from the census. Registration of vital events. For example, you want to produce, uh, you want to give family health education, you want to give implement the family planning program in the eligible couple. So how can you get the data means mainly, so if you know what is the marital status of the community, what is the fertility rate of the community, mainly through vital registration system, so you can get the data. So this is the primary data and this is the secondary data collection. So if you see the others, we have national sample survey, we have double report system and we have international resources. So these are all the other sources of data collection. So firstly, we'll discuss what is the primary data. So in this primary data, first method that they're using was observation method. So in this observation method, mainly the investigator or the investigator, he is directly going to the field. So there he is observing a group, he is observing a individual, he is studying them. So according to P. V. Young, observation may be defined, defined as systematic viewing coupled with consideration of seen phenomenon. So we mainly we are systematically using there, we are, we are going, we are into the situation and we are absorbing the uh, sample over there. So if you want to study a community, we are going and mingling with them, we are working along with them, we are, we are living along with them and we are getting the data from the community. Nextly, it is a method to record behavioral pattern of people in systematic manner. So in a systematic and proper manner, we are doing the observation and we are collecting the data. So if you see the advantages of this uh, observation method, 
so subject bias has been eliminated and information which we are obtaining is a current information so at present in in situ in a situation what the person is doing what the individual is doing you can get the acquired data means by seeing directly we can get the data if you see the disadvantage uh, disadvantages so here it is very expensive method and uh, it requires more time because we have to go to the community we have to stay with them we have to mingle with them we have to gain the trust then you can absorb the persons and it will give only limited information because you cannot see the person 24 into 7 so there will be some instances where you can the person can escape from your eyesight nextly uh, unforeseen factors may interfere with the observational task so whenever you are observing there will be certain factors that are getting interfered and you may get disturbed and respondents opinion cannot be recorded on the certain subject so these are the disadvantages and advantages for this observational method so nextly we'll see the interview method so what is this interview method means mainly the interviews they are undertaken on the individual basis or on the group basis so here in this interview method the data collecting method it involves the presentation or oral or verbal stimulus and replies in terms of oral or verbal responses and there are different types of interviews here so mainly in an interview we are getting the information in the form of oral form or in the form of verbal responses firstly if you see the types of interviews here types of techniques personal interview so in this personal interview interview what we are doing means we are directly sitting face to face with the personal there so as, as we are uh, sitting directly with the personal we can get the data so we can ask the questions and we can get the reply there so this is the personal interview so coming to the telephonic interview in telephonic interview here when it is not possible to conduct a personal interview we are directly going for this telephone interview here we cannot see we cannot have face to face contact but we can talk on the phone so we can talk on the phone in this structured interview here if you see the structured interview so here there are set of pre decided questions there are set of pre decided questions in which their uh, individual has an answer by ticking of or by short answer so what we are doing means we are giving him the closed ended questions here so he can say yes or no or he can give what is uh, in a short term answer means one to two line sentences either we if you, we can give him the questionnaire also just he can tick right or wrong whether he can do or not or even he can answer in a short answer manner so this is the structured interview coming to the unstructured interview so here in this case interview begins by asking general questions and encourages the person to talk freely so here we don't follow the predetermined questions as like if we are following in the structured interview so in the structured interview what we are doing means we are having set of questions there so from those questions only we are asking but if you come to the unstructured questions so in this unstructured questions we can ask anything generally we are asking and we are making the person who is giving the interview to make him freely and we are obtaining the answers here so this is the unstructured interview coming to the semi structured interview so here here the interview is mainly focused by asking the questions the questions are answered as well as it, it has the scope to express himself or herself, herself at the length here what we are doing we are, we are asking the questions to the person and we are letting him to express himself or herself mainly they can express themselves while they are giving the answers so this is a semi structured question nextly the other thing that we are, uh, that we are doing is focus interview so here here the attention is mainly focusing on the given experience of the respondents and its possible effects and this if you see this method it is more expensive but it is better for complex questions so low literacy or less cooperation so this is the focus interview so we have different types of interviews personal interview telephonic interview structured interview unstructured interview semi structured interviews and focus interviews so these are the some of the interview methods that were involved in the uh, data collection on this demography so coming to the advantages of this uh, interview method so if you see the advantages of this interview method he, it is a one one of the way to collect the in-depth information so whenever you are doing an interview you can answer you can get you can give a question to the person you can get the data so whatever the data it is required you can obtain most of the data from the person so the information can be recorded then and there it is complete so whatever the information he is giving 
there itself we can record and we can complete it. So here the feedback and the response rate is good and the interviewer can also observe non-verbal characteristics like tone of voice, facial expression and anxiety. So in this interview method, when a person is sitting in front of you or whenever you are going, uh, going for video call, so in these situations you can observe the voice of the person. You can get the facial expressions, how he is reacting to the tough questions, how he is reacting to the easy questions, whether he is anxiety levels are high, whether he is in a calm manner. So all these things can be seen in this interview method and it can, it help can be proved immediately if it is required. So here if the interviewer is having any kind of help, so we can provide some help and we can get the answers from this. So these are some of the advantages involved in this interview method. Coming to the disadvantages method, so it is more expensive and more time consuming because you want to conduct an interview, you have to plan a session, you need a particular room and you need some attendance, you need the, all the setup to have an interview and uh, for example, uh, the respondent, whenever you are giving, he may give you the bias information. And it takes more time when it is, when the respondents are more here. So means when the interview giving persons are more in number, so we need more time. So it will take time consuming and it is also the economic burden also. So training is required in case of many interviewers. So these are, these are the descent wages for this interview. Coming to the questionnaire method here, here the method of data collection is very quite popular. So if you are doing any kind of enquiries, so in these conditions we are mainly going, doing the questionnaire and we are giving to the respondents there. So if you see the questionnaires, the questionnaire is mailed to the respondents. So you are expecting them to read and you are expecting them to understand the question and they have to write down the reply on their own. So here, mainly we are giving questionnaires to obtain the answers from the respondents. So the respondents have to answer the question on their own. So what are all the advantages means it is low cost even in geographical area is too large to cover. So for example, you want to get obtain some questions from a particular person. Directly you can uh, make a question paper. It means you can make a questionnaire and you can mail to the person. The person can understand, read the question and he can understand. He can elaborate the answer and he can send to us. So what are all the disadvantages means? So this can be used only when the respondent is educated and cooperative. And it is difficult to know the expected respondent have filled the form or it is filled by someone else. So whenever you are giving, trying to get the answer, there are chances that these respondents may give the question sheet to another person and there are more chances of uh, writing the answers by other person. So it is the slowest method of data collection. So these are some of the disadvantages and advantage of this questionnaire. Nextly, diaries. So if you see these diaries, these diaries are used to record the data which is obtained from the individuals. So the data expressed in the diaries are in-depth information and can be used for the research purposes. So if you see uh, many persons, so if you see many persons, they are having a habit of writing the diaries. So these diaries, what it, they contain all the recorded data. So whenever they are doing any research, whenever doing their work, so their personal information, everything will be embedded in these diaries. So if you have those diaries, you can get more amount of data. Suppose you want to know about the individual. So if you take his personal diary, so if he has the habit of writing everything, all the important uh, situations in his life were accumulated in that. So you can take the data from the diaries. Nextly, critical incidents. So these critical incidents that were related to health and less. So this event is re recorded and it is used for arriving the diseases and policies regarding the health matters for example if you see here uh, if you go to if you go to hospital you have some long term diseases so there you can you can grab the recorded data so whatever the previous disaster summaries are there or whatever the data which is already available you can gather them so you can do quick decisions based on the data which was already there in the records so this is critical decisions so this is regarding the methods of data collection in uh, so so far we have discussed regarding the primary method of data collection so in next class i would like to discuss you regarding the secondary data collection and their advantages and their uses so if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel and if you have any queries you can drop them in the comment box thank you so much thanks for the support